Today we're going to have a look at some of the characteristics of TYT's radio, the TC-3000A. It comes in either VHF or UHF models and it has two power settings. One is 5 on low and the other one is um, nominally 9 to 10. So we're going to start with the factory antenna that comes with the radio and we're going to have a look first of all at the standing wave that we're going to get out of that and we're going to alternate between reading the standing wave on low power and then on high power. So we'll get started here now and this frequency we're going to start with is 145 and it looks like we're about 1.4, we'll call that 1.5 on low power. Sorry, I'm writing as we go along here. Power, high. That's how you get your high power. It's the uh, second key below the push to talk. And we got 1.73, so a little bit higher on that. Now I'm going to change the radio over to 155. One. You have a voice enunciation and uh, I'm just going to leave it on. I guess I'll move it back to low to be consistent here. Power. High. Power. Low. Okay. Again this is going to be 155. 2.4. On low power for the standing wave. Power high. 2.5. Not too bad. Now we're going to move up to 165. Two. 7.9. Now we're going to go to power high. Point three. Now, finally, one seventy five. The voice is starting to drive me nuts already. Okay. We'll call that ten point five. Even though we got as high as ten point seven. And now we're we're going to call that 11.2 for 175. So with the stock antenna, we got um, acceptable readings 145 to 155. When we moved up to 165, we started uh, getting past the point we want to be. So it seems also that. Um, it didn't appreciably uh, make the standing wave too much worse going on to the high power setting and next we're going to go and look at see what we're getting for reflected power and uh, forward power. Now we're moving on to our forward power and we're going to start out on 145 on low and see what we've got for watts going forward. 3.4 on low. Power high. And 8.7 on high. So, and that's with the stock antenna on 145. Now we'll One. move over to 155. Again, 3.5, just a little bit higher. Power, high. Now we'll do high power. Eight. So we've got eight forward on high and eight. I actually just noticed something that was significant uh, that I wasn't expecting when I just gave a shot at trying the forward power on 155 with a tune antenna 
and I was surprised to see 10 watts right on the money. <coughs> Whereas with, you'll recall, when we tried the stock antenna, our forward power was 3.5 on low and 8 on high power forward. So it would appear that, again, we're seeing the difference there and we'll look at reflected power as well at 155 and see where we showed up with that 1.7 coming back at us. And our reflected power there was 1.7, so that remained consistent between the stock and the tune, but the tune certainly did better on the forward power at 10 watts. <clears throat> now we will go to 165 and 5.9 on low power. I'm going to go back to high and I guess we probably were on low then. Power. High. All right. Now, high on 165. Sorry about that mix up. The 175. We're seeing 5 on 175. And I don't know what power setting that is yet. Power. High. Okay, that was low power. 5 watts on 175 and 7.4 we'll call it 7.2 for high power on 175 so we got our highest power at 8.7 watts uh, at 145 using this stock antenna and the lowest power reading was also on 145 at 3.4 next we'll look at the reflected power and see what's happening with that. Now we moved on to reflected power with the stock antenna and we're going to start out on low on 145 and we record a reading of 0 0.03. Now we will switch over to power, high. high power and we get 0.15 on high power for a reflected signal on 145. Now we're going to move over to 155. One. 2.7. Power low. So um, we'll call that one on low power. and 1.7 on high power for 155. Now 165 and that's going to be power low low power 165 reflected signal 3.5. Now that's getting up there and uh, if we combine for example the figures with power high reflecting 3.6 on high power on 165 with the stock antenna if we combine reflected on that with the uh, forward power that we had before we get a total of 9.6 now moving up to 175 and we'll see where we're at with that. Power low. 3.4. It's about the same as the previous reading. Power high. 5.2 for reflected power on 175. So and what we had for forward power before on that was uh, 7.2. I'll we'll double check that. Seems like a high reading. Again, we're getting a 5.2 reflected power on 175. Now we're going to move on next and uh, try some tuned antennas and see what happens there. Now we're going to move over to the tuned antennas 
they cover five megahertz band spread on each side of the center tune point. This one, for example, the IP6, IPX6 center tune to 145. Usually you get a slightly higher, st higher standing wave ratio due to the velocity factor of the dual wall tubing that's on it. And we see here 1.8. So we do have a slightly higher, higher velocity factor. Power. As we saw, 1.4 on that. Let's go back to low again. Power. Low. And 1.43. So we're about similar on both of those. I should have thought of this sooner. I just added in a frequency counter there to show what frequencies we're on in case I get muddled up. Uh, this is 155 on low now. 2.5. Power high. And 2.6 on high. Now we're going to go with 155 on low power and we're 2.4 to 2.5 on low power high. and on high power we're 2.5. Now we'll go with 165 on low power and it's 2.8. We'll move it over to high power. Power high. And we get 2.9. Go back, we'll remember we had 7.9 standing wave at 165 with the stock antenna and 8.3 on high power with the stock. So this is where we're starting to see the difference between the tuned antennas and the stock antennas when you're moving above 155. It, they're doing okay on 145 to 155 range. Uh, they were getting a little higher on 155 um, right about that point with the stock. So what you've got in terms of advantage with the tuned antenna in the field uh, between 145 and 155 is it's just more rugged and um, it has a much longer coil on it. I, think you might want to look at how your receive capability would be with those as well with the standing wave notwithstanding. The last thing we have to move to now is over to the final 175. Last we're going to move up to 175 Power low. and uh, you'll note that on the frequency counter the TC3000A does not transmit uh, at 175 it goes to 174 so that's what it, we're actually going to be on and 1.65 on low power for that power high 1.71 on high power now if we go back to uh, the stock antenna you'll recall that the standing wave was 10.5 on low and 11.2. A huge, huge difference between using a stock antenna and a tuned antenna when you move above 155. It um, is a no-brainer at that stage. I don't think I'll run through many of the reflected and forward power settings through all of them again. I think uh, we've made the point with the standing wave. We'll have a quick look, for example, at forward power on 174 and we're 5.2 for forward power on low. Power high. And when we're on high power, we're 6.9, so maybe we'll call that 7. So that is pretty much the same uh, as what we were getting with the stock antenna but then it might be interesting to move over and uh, just see then what we're getting with reflected power because uh, I suspect that might be where the story is told. So we're just going to do that. Get our frequency counter turned on again. 
adjust our power, power. Low. and let's see what we've got for reflective power there. It's a half a watt on low and um, we were 3.4 watts reflected with power. the stock antenna. Reflected power here is 1 and again we were 5.2 on high power. So again huge difference confirming that the tuned antenna is a must when you're above 155 megahertz. Hey Pops, how's it going? I hate taking skins off my hands, they're freezing. Don't you have a hand warmer? Oh. Yeah. Shouldn't keep your... I thought it was my phone. I have my phone and my hand warmer in the same pocket. <laughs> Good idea. <laughs>